Okay, thank you very much, Roman. So welcome. Uh, good afternoon or good morning, depending on uh, who are we talking to. So thank you for being here today. We're having a one hour session of the Info Day uh, organized by Impact Ed Tech uh, uh, called Meet the Best in Class Startups. So thank you very much for everyone uh, uh, for attending this meeting. And I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview of who are we going to have here today with us and uh, what are you going to be able to listen to? So first of all, thank you to thank you to Roman and Sofia, uh, members of the Impact Ed Tech team that are behind the scenes. And thank you to Johanna, Hemi Niki, Jose Rubinger, Maria Trujas, and Bente Malmer for having accepted the invitation to be the panelists of today's session. So the three of them have been um, awarded the best in class distinction in the Impact Ed Tech program. And the three of them are the founders or CEOs of three edtech startups that participated in the remote schooling open call of the Impact Ed Tech program. Uh, so thank you to the four of you for being here today with us. So I'm just going to go briefly through the program. Today we're going to have a one hour session where we're going to start with uh, Roman, that is, go that is the prior coordinator of Impact Ed Tech at European Schoolnet. And she's going to give us a brief overview of uh, the program, of what have we achieved so far, the benefits on, and what we do for those who don't know the program yet. And then we're going to let the, the panelists so the four amazing panelists that we have here today to introduce themselves and to introduce uh, their um, their solution uh, because some of us know it and some of us don't. So they will have five minutes each to to have a, a little uh, presentation about what they have been doing these five past months. And then we're going to move on to a panel discussion with the four panelists and myself as a moderator and uh, Ruman uh, to discuss about what they have been doing in the Impact Ed Tech program, what has been, what have been the challenges, the benefits, uh, the obstacles, and also the advantages of participating in a program like Impact Ed Tech. And um, we will uh, base this uh, panel discussion in a set of questions. And then at the end, uh, we will have like five, 10 minutes, depending on how long the panel is, to have a, a Q&A. So don't worry about uh, having a lot of doubts and questions and uh, don't be shy. Just write them all in the chat and then we will address them to the several panelists. If it's a general question, just write the question. But if you want to address a, a question to a specific panelist, just put to Jose, to Joanna, or uh, et cetera, et cetera. So thank you once again uh, for being here today. And Roman, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Tanya, for this uh, short introduction. So I will now take the floor uh, to give an introduction of what is impacted tech, uh, our objectives, what we promote, and of course, how to apply. Um, many of you may be interested to know more um, about our program. And um, here today is about uh, providing you information and uh, some feedback from startups that participated in our previous program. So you are at the right place. Uh, let me start with, uh, in a nutshell, the objectives of Impact Ed Tech. We are a startup incubator accelerator and we help uh, uh, European digital education innovators, so startup and SMEs, uh, to bring their, their solution, uh, solutions that can contribute uh, to personalized and inclusive educational models. And we aim to bring this solution up and to support uh, the development of the skills uh, that are relevant in today's world uh, and to enhance the learners and uh, the teachers' um, abilities. Um, in Impact Ed Tech, so under our program, uh, we are divided into two strands. So first uh, is called Strand A, and it targets uh, Ed Tech solution uh, that goes to formal education, to school. Um, that is to say, solutions that can apply under this trend would be solutions that have a clear vision for the pedagogical, pedagogical use of ICT uh, that would transform education models uh, at the level of formal education. And that goes from early childhood to secondary and vocational education, uh, also known as K-12 uh, solutions. We also have another uh, strand uh, that's tar uh, that uh, targets more uh, startups that um, reach B2C uh, content-based solution. And this trend is open to any age group uh, and level of education outside of the formal school-based compulsory education 
so here the solutions under it, uh, this trend can address any type of learners uh, via formal or informal education. Um, so here, if you would be looking of examples of uh, startups uh, that uh, could apply either to trend A or trend B, I invite you to read, so to visit our website, impactatech.eu, and then to, um, to read the guide for applicants. And we have some very concrete and very good examples of which solution would um, belong to which strand. Um, what is our vision of Impact at Tech? So we aim to digitally transform education by stimulating, supporting, and scaling up the use of digital and innovating uh, practices uh, to support digital innovators and uh, infinite to make, make better use of uh, digital technology for teaching and learning. Uh, and all in all, uh, we also aim to support uh, the growth of European educational technology providers, thanks to uh, our program. Uh, talking about more specific objectives, uh, what can you get if you are selected to participate in an impact edtech program? Um, uh, those edtech innovators uh, could uh, obtain or improve their MVP and we would get uh, equity-free financial support of up to 197k per startup, uh, as well as access to a nine-month incubation program, um, so both acceleration and incubation program uh, that includes uh, access to cross-disciplinary uh, business and educational mentoring, um, as well as uh, specialized mentoring opportunities. And uh, you'd get the opportunity to have your MVP, uh, your prototypes uh, validated uh, and also in a second uh, phase tested in a real educational setting. Um, that's uh, what we offer to have the, the products tested uh, either by um, experts uh, or by uh, real learners in, in the classroom for those that belong to strand A and that goes to school and uh, to having access to, um, to a pool of experts for startup belonging to strand B. The challenges uh, that are addressed uh, at Impact at Tech are by three. So here, uh, they are displayed here on the, on the screen. So we target inclusive uh, education, so uh, solutions that uh, address inclusive either inclusive education, so targeting specific underdeserved or vulnerable groups, uh, at uh, any school level, and that would aim to support the uh, improvement of uh, educational attainment for all. We also um, aim uh, at uh, solutions that would enhance personalized learning. Uh, so here, uh, with a great focus on supporting new and research-based pedagogical approaches for in-classroom education, uh, but also encouraging lifelong learning. And finally, we also aim um, to target solutions that uh, enhance the skills development of uh, either children, teachers, but also other type of learners uh, with a focus on, but not limited to the development of uh, STEM, so science, uh, technology, engineering, and mathematics topics, but also computational thinking and 21st century skills. Uh, so enhancing uh, critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and so on. But overall, um, also uh, the solutions that we will promote aim at supporting uh, schools and general learners and ensuring educational continuity. Uh, my final words uh, will be to talk about the, the current uh, open call that is uh, opened um, until the 30th of June. Uh, it is the third and last uh, open call that is um, so, uh, promoted by Impact Tech. Uh, there are 41 days left to apply, and um, here are uh, the links and the very important links uh, to know more uh, about the call. Uh, you have the link um, uh, of the project website where you will find the open call. I also displayed on the screen the application link, and if you have any question about the open call itself, uh, wish to know more, feel free to address them at uh, our uh, contact email that is uh, shown on the screen, contact at impactedtech.eu. Um, 
thank you for uh, staying with me. If uh, you would wish to attend another uh, info session, we'll have a, another one that will be organized by our partner FBA uh, on the 26th of May, I believe it's next week uh, from 11 to 12. So stay tuned. All the info uh, are um, on the Impacted Tech website. Uh, you will find them there. I will now uh, give the floor back to Tanya for uh, the panelist introduction. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Roman, for this brief introduction of the project. I hope everyone got excited and inspired by what we're doing at Impact EdTech. So now I'm I have the pleasure to introduce the panelists of today's session, which you already know because uh, we saw their little faces before. So we have with us Johanna Heminki, founder and CEO of El Elias Robot. And sorry very much for the pronunciation of of my of the of the names that are not Spanish, and then uh, we have also with us Jose Rubinger Figlio, co-founder and CEO of Kitchenable. I can see there, and I can't see Maria Trujas and Bente Malmberg, founders of Noteblock. I don't know if you have your camera on, but that would be cool if uh, you can just turn on your camera. And uh, hey. So, and I'm gonna remind, please, everyone that is not a panelist, turn off your cameras and turn off your mics so we can have a better overview of the panelists today. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for being here today. And I'm just gonna give the floor first to Johanna. So if you have a slides, you can just share your screen. And if not, just you have five minutes to introduce yourself and uh, this, the, mm, your product. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for introduction. So hello everyone, my name is Johanna Hemminki. I'm a CEO and founder of Elias Robot. Uh, I will share my screen, just a moment. Can you see it? Yes, we can. Excellent, yeah. Elias Robot changes the way of learning languages by using robots and voice user interface. Uh, our company is located in Helsinki, Finland, uh, including me and my co-founder Carol. Our team consists of eight members that have expertise in language teaching, AI, tech, business and marketing. Uh, our Elias robot solution for physical robots is already used widely in Finnish schools and we have a large teacher community here. We have users in over 20, 20 countries at the moment. You know, the only way to learn a new language is to speak it. There are a lot of language learning apps for learning words and grammar, but almost nothing for learning how to speak. Uh, I have a background as a teacher. I have been working over 15 years as a Finnish teacher here in, in, here in Finland. And uh, when I was working as a teacher, I noticed how time consuming and difficult it is to, to arrange speaking activities in the classroom. And now COVID-19 pandemic has brought even more challenges to language learning and teaching. How to learn and teach communication skills online. There are not so many language learning apps that help to practice speaking. There are some, but they focus more on pronunciation, not communication or conversation skills. Also, most applications include pre-made content only, but it's not, not possible to add your own dialogues or vocabularies. With uh, traditional textbooks, you can learn grammar and vocabulary, but you can't learn speaking. We have created an AI-powered language learning app with, with the voice user interface that helps to learn to speak by speaking. Elias robot can be used with several different voice-enabled devices like humanoid robots, smartphones, tablets or laptops. With Elias robot, students don't have to be afraid of making mistakes. Learning is fun and learning results are better. Uh, in language learning, communication is, is essential. You can't clone teachers, but with Elias robot, you are able to clone teachers' expertise and share this expertise with anyone. Uh, Elias provides personalized language coaching and instant feedback and enables learning anywhere and anytime at school or at home. Uh, application includes pre-made uh, English curriculum for, for European framework levels A1 and A2 but teachers are also able to create their own content with the lesson editor tool. 
Uh, we are developing our own dialogue system that allows teachers to create a natural-like educational dialogues for the robots and virtual robots without any programming skills. And this dialogue system makes our solution flexible and easy to adjust to different national curriculums and different needs. Uh, during Impact EdTech program, we have tested applications robot-free version with real users in, in remote schooling context. And uh, that's, that has been very uh, important before launching it to larger audience. Participating in Impact EdTech program has been a fantastic experience for us and it has helped us to reach important partners and connect with teachers and schools in, in Europe. So uh, we are very happy and, and thankful for being selected for best in class uh, solution and we, we promise to continue our hard work to make an impact on language education. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to you. And thank you to you for participating in the project. I guess the project wouldn't exist without startups uh, like you. So thank you very much, Johanna, for the explanation and thank you for keeping it to five minutes. That's amazing. Uh, so Jose, I see you there. So the floor is yours. If you want to share your screen and tell us more about key to enable. Yes, I'm going to do it right now. Let me see if you can see my screen. Now we can no, no still you. Oh, sorry. Okay, now I think it's okay. Yeah, now I I can see the screen, but I see a gray rectangle. Can you see it there? No. Can you try again? Yes, of course. Let me see it here. These are things that sometimes happens when we. Okay. What you can see now? Now, yes. Perfect. Oh, very good. Okay, perfect. Everything is okay now, right? Uh, no, I can. Now, yes. I don't know what you're opening, but I can see a great rectangle. Um, I think now it should be okay. It's okay. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, let's do it now. Thanks. So thank you so much for being here. So uh, this is me, José Rubinger, and this is Kitchen Enable. Uh, we usually say that we need to build the path for people with disabilities to thrive, expand their creativity and their critical thinking, because it's very important. We have to make them communicate and develop their skills and talents. Of course, this will make them feel empowered and independent. And I'm going to show you like a short story, for example, about Amanda. Amanda was born in cerebral palsy, but when we... Uh, introduced her, introduced to the school that she was, our solution, everything changed. You can see here that Sophia is learning uh, together with Amanda and they are having fun, they are engaging. And Amanda can't even talk to Sophia, but it doesn't matter. Here they are learning, they are playing, they are engaging, and this is what matters most for us. I will try to explain how everything started. Everything started because of this man. He was born with cerebral palsy. His name is Gleason, and he graduated in computer science using this head pointer. And together with him, we developed what we call KeyX. Uh, this is one of the solutions that we have that works with a combination of colors and symbols to deliver the same commands as a keyboard and a mouse that is already in your laptop or in your computer has. And we also had developed a lot of other uh, assistive devices, because uh, today we have to attend more than 80% of all disabilities that are found inside the school system. And here we can see Abdullah. Uh, it was the first time that he saw uh, or he worked with our solution uh, before uh, he could not uh, use a computer. And here uh, his teacher is teaching him how to write her name in Arabic. It took no more than five to 10 minutes for him to understand how to access the computer. And remember, if we can access a computer or if you can access technology, you can do whatever you want in this world. Uh, of course, now Abdullah is uh, surfing the internet, he's playing, he's doing a lot of things. And it does not depend on the language. 
Here we can see Julia. She's inside a regular classroom there in Brazil, uh, learning together with her peers. And here he's, she's just playing because someone told that Angry Birds is a very funny game. And she downloaded it and she knows that she will hit the target. But do you think that she was lucky to hit the target? No, this is pure math. Why is that? Because she was the best math student among all her classmates in 2016 and 2017. Because she started using our solution and uh, she learned a lot uh, about math and of course in Portuguese. And here we have uh, Alison. He was invisible inside a place program and then he came inside the classroom and he wrote a book. Actually, now he has written three books and the municipality printed his books and now Alison is known everywhere uh, as of the, the guy that is writing books uh, and who was born with a disability. But we do not have to say it. We have to say that he has other skills. Um, uh, we also have an uh, educational platform uh, that uh, teachers helped us to create, to evaluate and to make it happen. Usually it takes like five minutes to build tasks and activities so they can do a lot of things while they are at home, while they are inside the classrooms, uh, in remote schooling, for example. And we also can make some diagnostic and pedagogical interventions. This is very important because sometimes teachers need this kind of uh, tasks and materials while they are inside the classrooms. And here we are. Impact EdTech chosen us uh, with this EU initiative and we are one of the best in class. And I have to thank all the teachers that make us build this solution. And of course, our teachers and mentors from Impact EduTech, from the pilot program and everybody that uh, was together with us. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Well, thanks to you because uh, we can agree all that uh, your solution is one of the most inspiring ones and we could see all the excitement last uh, last time we saw each other in the webinar. So thanks to you for having agreed to participate and having been here today. Well, and congratulations. And I forgot also to say congratulations to Johanna for El Elias also, Elias and Kito enabled to achieve the best in class uh, recognition, which I hope you, you guys were happy about. Uh, we will talk about that later. So thank you very much, Jose. And now I'm going to give the floor to uh, Maria Bente from Noteblock. Um, so the floor is yours, girls. You have five minutes to show the slides and tell us a bit about you, about and about the solution and your participation in the program. Thank you very much, Tanya. Um, can you see our screen? Yes, we can. Perfect. Great, thank you. So good afternoon from Barcelona. We are here to present Noteblock Scanner. Uh, it's a mobile scanner app for the education community. So who are we? So my name is Bente Malmberg. I'm the co-founder of Noteblock. I'm originally from Sweden, um, but I've been living in Barcelona for a long time, so since 2009. My background is business administration, and I previously worked in worldwide marketing for HP, Hewlett Packard. And my name is Maria. I'm actually from Barcelona. Uh, I lived uh, several years abroad in London, Madrid, and New York. But then uh, I just came back uh, home. Uh, my background is uh, related to communications, advertising, and journalism. But in 2009, I uh, decided to leave the, the corporate world and become an entrepreneur. And I've been like playing around with mobile app since uh, 2010. So what is Noteblock? So Noteblock, like we said, is a mobile scanner app and organizer. So it helps teacher, teachers and students to scan, save, organize and share any notes, homework, documents, exams or textbooks using only their mobile phone. So here on the right, we will show you how it works. So you can see that the app has detected the contour of the, of the page. And it will um, correct the perspective. It will correct and remove shadows, improve the lighting. 
and after you can easily export it in a click to JPEG or PDF. Um, the app is completely free to use. It's available both for Android and iOS. It is safe and private. The documents scanned inside the app are not um, accessible, like we can't access them uh, as a company. They are stored inside of the mobile, uh, inside of the user's own mobile device. So nobody has access to any content um, scanned. And it's very easy to use. In just a few clicks, you can digitize any image, uh, share it through Gmail, Google Drive, WhatsApp, Moodle, and uh, uh, also use text extraction tools. So uh, during the acceleration program, uh, we grew by more than 1 million downloads. Uh, a lot of this is uh, related to the hard work that our mentors pushed us to do during the program. And also, we have been working very closely with the teachers from the pilot. Um, one of the things that we noticed, uh, we, we already did, knew about that, but it, it became even more clear during the pilot, is that uh, it's very important that uh, students that access the app, if uh, the app is recommended by a school or university, the app comes without advertising. Actually, um, we can provide all this technology for free because the, the app is ad based currently. So during the, the program, we have put the basis to, to develop the another note block version, which will be licensed, meaning that schools or universities or even governments can pay a fee and, and, and get licensed for, for all their students. And also we are working on developing the note block SDK, which stands for Software Development Kit. And it will allow existing mobile apps uh, to integrate uh, scanner functionality. So, for example, we are in talks with uh, universities here in Barcelona that they already have their own apps. So if they want to include uh, functionality for their students that, so that they can capture the notes and, and, and share them with other students or teachers, they can do that by integrating the note block SDK in, in their own existing app. And finally, as we said, like this is an already existing product. It was existing before uh, joining the Impact EdTech Accelerator. Uh, you can download the app totally for free from uh, for Huawei devices, also iOS and Android. And if you have any questions after this uh, info day, you can just get in touch with either me or Bente in the emails you see on the right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you both of you uh, for the insightful presentation and uh, you, you heard them like if you if you want a new organizer and a new app that does that for you, just text them and uh, and get in touch. So I'm gonna now ask uh, the four panelists to turn on their cameras and also Roman uh, as part of the Impact Tech uh, um, team and uh, we're gonna go through some questions and we're going to have a, a discussion and then please uh, the participants do not forget to write your questions in the chat and we will address them at the Q&A after the panel. So first question will be for all of you and I don't know who wants to start but like feel free to take the floor. First question is like in your opinion and from the, your own experience in this program what would make the difference in the application process when applying for the for the Impact Tech, Tech program? What would you tell to the new startups that are now trying to apply for the third open call? Who can we first? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Go. Um, we can just speak out of our own experience. Uh, but we, what we believe is that you should try to explain everything in a mess simple way as possible, even if you have a very complex complex product or project. So it's easy for anybody to understand it. Also to start filling out the application on time. <laughs> There's quite a lot of questions, so don't leave it until the last minute. It's better to think everything through. Uh, also to read all instructions carefully. And we also believe in that you should adapt your messaging um, 
we don't think that like don't just copy and paste text from your website into the different fields it's better to like read the questions well and write like a nice and coherent answer okay so being punctual and on time and not leaving to the last day i, I yeah. guess girls you had experience with that and plain language and adaptive messages that's that's a really really nice tips and tricks johanna what would you yeah. say yeah, I was thinking that Impact EdTech wants to see uh, those solutions that, that will have a strong potential, strong impact on education. So I think all the uh, uh, previous experience and achievements that, that will support this is, uh, is important. Also, um, I think it's important to, to check that company is suitable for the program. So check and explore the, the criteria carefully. Okay, so attention to detail here, right? Check. Uh, try not to apply if you really think that your your uh, startup uh, is not working on uh, school bridges, is not working on remote schooling or in ed tech. So thank you very much. And Jose, last but not least. Yeah. In thank you. In my case, what I did was um, I closed all the doors. I took my phone away from me. And I pretend that you were in front of me and I was trying to explain everything that we had. So don't lie. Trust that you uh, have the right solution for what they want and uh, try to put everything that is in your mind and everything that actually your solution is. And as Benty uh, and Maria said, uh, you have to you have to write exactly what you need do not copy and paste because it it will not work you have to you have to build a complete new uh, subscription to this uh, competition thank you very much well i like that don't lie and trust yeah. yourself right trust, trust your skills and don't lie that's 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 the most important thing we the teachers also tell to the kids huh? and the students when they're when they're when they're doing their homework so this this works the same so thank you very much for your contribution roman will you have a word or a tip and trick uh, for our next ed tech startups uh, yes tanya two words guide for applicants and faq Everything is included there. Uh, we have worked on behalf of the whole Impact uh, EdTech Committee. We have worked very hard on putting up a clear guide for applicants uh, and a clear FAQ. And if you have further questions, uh, don't hesitate to write an email to uh, the contact uh, email. I mean, I like your words because that's that's really important. Sometimes when we're filling applications, we just forget that actually maybe some questions are already replied in those documents. So don't forget to check all the documentation on the website and just drop us a text or a, drop us an email if you have further questions. So thank you very much, Roman. And we're moving to the second question. Um, now I would like to ask you about tips and tricks, but not to fill in the application, which you already explained really well, but to have achieved the best in class distinction in the Impact at Tech program. What do you think uh, you did uh, so well that you, you arrived here? And what would you be the, the secret tip to tell someone if they want to achieve also this distinction? And now we're going to start the other way around. So Jose, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, it was very important for us to understand exactly what the strengths of our solution were and how to highlight them. And during the Impact EdTech program, we made sure that we always implemented the helpful feedback that we received from the Impact EdTech team, which really helped us, and especially with all the documentation that we had to provide. So we also made sure that we worked hand in hand with our pilot teachers and provide them with as much as knowledge and encouragement as possible because they were the ones who were there to put your solution working so we understand that the teachers were among the main driving force behind the success of our pilot okay thank you very much so cooperation listening no at the end is a it's a matter of listening what the others have to say and the feedback so that would be what brought you to like really be able to emphasize the strengths of key to enable thank you very much Jose. and uh, well the other way around so joanna it, yeah i i agree uh, i think it was uh, i think we also succeeded 
in, in listening to teachers and students because I think in the collaboration with schools it's, it's very important that you have an open and a humble mind to receive feedback and also learn from, from that feedback. But yeah, uh, I don't think if I have, have anything uh, else to add, this, has, this must have been a difficult decision because all the startups in the program were top European edtech companies, so difficult selection process, I think. It was indeed, and that's why I congratulate you, the four of you and all your teams uh, for having made it so far, because it's true that uh, you made it to the top three, but it's, uh, it's true what uh, Johanna said, like all the startups in the program were really outstanding and all the solutions we could see in the webinars last month were really tackling specific problems uh, uh, in the educational and technology gap. So thank you very much for, for your contribution. And uh, no plug girls, uh, Maria and Bente. Um, we believe it's because we work like really hard also. <laughs> Our mentors put us like really ambitious goals and KPIs. Like, for example, one of our uh, KPIs for the business part was to increase revenue in a market by 20% in four months. So we were sharing some of these with other startups and they were, oh my God, like, how are you gonna do that? We didn't know that in the beginning. I mean, if they would have asked me, are you are you going to increase your revenue 20% in four months? I would have said no. But our mentors pushed us really, really hard, uh, helped us think about all the possibilities that we had, all the things that we could test, etc. And we did it. So um, I think everything is possible. And you have to really trust on, on, on what your mentors uh, have to say and, and their recommendations and work uh, really close with them. Okay, so I guess that an ambitious goal uh, makes you work harder and that's how you all came, like arrived here, not to this session, like feedback, listening, ambitious goals and working hard. And uh, I think that's one of the, uh, one of, uh, the assets of, of uh, participating in this program. You, you're forced to, to listen and to be open to, to suggestions because if not, you wouldn't be working in a cooperative and collaborative uh, program. So congratulations and thank you very much. I hope all the participants took notes of uh, the tips and tricks. And uh, now I would like to ask you, which is the lesson learned that you take from these five months of uh, the acceleration program? Could you share that with us? What would you say like, okay, I take this home and I take this for the future and I will try to implement this in the future in my product, in my collaboration with my team, etc. And now we go the other way around and Maria and Vente, the, turn, the round is yours. Uh, this is a very difficult question <laughs> because we, Basically, we learned so many different things, um, so I'm not even sure like how to choose, but I think for us, it was extremely valuable um, to get input from so many different people. So from, for example, from European Schoolnet, uh, Romana, Dina, um, you're also from <laughs> European Schoolnet, Tanya, uh, but like learning, for example, about the GDPR and like how to prepare the information and consent forms from for both parents teachers and children, like we learned a lot there from European Schoolnet. Also the piloting, like all the input from the teachers and from the students, the mentors, uh, so Guillermo and Ramon, we have had so many sessions with them like on a weekly basis where they have been teaching us different things from different like aspects of the business. And also the, the bootcamp week, that was incredible. So at the beginning of, um, the whole accelerator where you got to hear from different experts in in different areas for us it's been like um life-changing so for no plug scanner so we are taking home a ton of different lessons and things to implement and we are still working on it today okay thank you very much so it all comes down to feedback and constructive feedback so i'm happy that you that you were uh, I'm happy that you were glad uh, with particip participating in this program. So, Johanna, I mean, if you could choose one of the best lessons learned, because as they said, like many, maybe they, there are a lot. Yes, there are a lot. Yeah, before the program started, we, we thought that we wouldn't need so much educational mentoring because we are a company founded by teachers. But I was surprised how useful that, that was for us and how much we had to learn from this this perspective. For example, together with our mentor and teachers, we developed a 
totally new lesson structure and lesson plans for Elias Robot app that will help to improve our our um, individual learning experience. So I would say this this was the best best lesson. Okay, thank you very much. I think we are all in the same line. So Jose, as Johanna, uh, we come from hardware. So uh, how can we do it in remote learning? So this was a very interesting experience because uh, we could try uh, the remote solution and we learned a lot from the teachers. We learned a lot from the mentors. And I think that um, uh, we were already uh, doing some things in UK and also in the Netherlands, but each country is unique. So uh, we could learn a lot from Spain, from uh, uh, Portugal and from Israel and of course uh, do uh, many things with other countries but it was very important to be inside these countries and try uh, the online training it was uh, for me it was the, 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 the most important thing. Thank you very much Jose I think the impact that the program and team is really really happy to hear all this feedback from you guys and also thank and we're really happy and thankful to the European Commission for creating these amazing opportunities because we wouldn't be here without them so uh, we're also thanking them uh, for their hard work and um, well Jose something that you said it was important right like uh, the educational challenges are different in every country and the fact that this program covered all the European countries or almost all of them gave the opportunity to see how we were facing obstacles in the educational remote schooling scenario in Spain, in Portugal, in Finland, etc. So I think that was something also like that that other startups should uh, should take into account when applying like that they're going to have the opportunity to go beyond their borders, go beyond the national uh, already knowledge that they have and get input from other realities that sometimes are a bit um, um, that we don't see them because we don't experience them. So we're going now to the last question to also have time to have a Q&A. And the last question would be, according to you, to all of you, what are the remaining educational challenges that edtech startups could help solving? So what can you do and what can the products do your solutions to try to, to, to improve the educational scenario? Can and I start? Jose, yeah, okay, definitely. Okay. So uh, we need to address this inequalities because when it comes to educational infrastructure, uh, it will reflect in different learning opportunities and qualities. For example, in rural and urban areas. Uh, I come from Brazil, so it's a developing country and we have this gap that has to be addressed. And I'm not talking uh, uh, only about my solution or other solution, but in, in general, if you have a solution uh, and you are not thinking about these people, you should think better. You should try to, uh, to build something that could make these people also use technology. Uh, of course, our market is very unique uh, because people, of, uh, people with disabilities uh, they are a niche market, but imagine thinking about a niche market like that and if they are in rural areas, for example. So we need to put this in, in, um, in our systems. Yeah, thank you very much, Jose, because that's one thing, like uh, maybe sometimes we forget that these solutions are being applied or implemented in the schools that are located in big cities or cities that, that have been more used to use technology or have uh, computers, but not everyone has a computer in their class. So unless a solution like so niche like yours, like key to enable. So yeah, yeah I completely agree. And thank you for the insightful uh, feedback uh, to the panel session. And Johanna, what would you say that at the startups? Yeah, I agree with Jose that it's uh, one big unresolved issue in the world that there is a skill gap and inequality in education. Millions of students who, who lack, lack uh, basic skills and, and also language skills and we have to do something for that. I think also that edtech startups uh, should think about how is the world after pandemic? Uh, is is uh, distance learning going to be our new normal? What will happen next and what are the... Uh, other challenges that, that education may face. 
I think that's the point of this term that we have been listening so far and hearing all, all, all over the news now, new normal, new normality. What are we going to face now? It's going to be completely digital, hybrid, remote. Are we going to face several things in several different countries that could also be an option? And one other term that I take from your intervention would be gap. So access to education, inequality, and the gaps between regions, even between cities in the same country. So I think that that is where edtech startups can help a lot develop and improve the educational sector. So thank you very much for all your work. And uh, thanks to the Little Alliance for doing that. And um, so Maria and Bente, you're the last. So what would you think edtech uh, startups could help solve in the educational uh, uh, scenario? Yeah, we believe that what needs to be done, and I, 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 we are working on, on that, is to um, let everyone, like no matter where people are, uh, no matter what the background is, access to this edge technology. So this is why, since the very beginning of Noteblog, we provide 100% free products, not only the, the app, but we started providing free notebooks in Barcelona. In fact, this is how Noteblog started. And apart from that, like uh, we we develop a mobile app because especially in in less developed countries, as you said, Tanya, there is uh, not even computers for for children or or in school. So, but we notice that even in those in those um, less developed countries, people do have access to mobile technology and mobile phones. So. Um, we are centered on that and also we are centered on and focused on connecting both the online and offline worlds and i think there is also a big gap in there and we are putting all our efforts in working in making that better well thank you very much uh, to the three of you and to the rest of the startups that uh, have worked uh, uh, with you in this remote schooling uh, call because it's as you said right like you're all doing your little effort in your little aid in your area to make a common uh, and to achieve a common goal so and breaching all those gaps so thank you very much for all your interventions in the panel and now we're going to move to the q a we have a couple uh, we have already like a couple of questions and i'm gonna address them to each of you so for example uh, the first one will be for the impact tech team. So, Roman, I think that's up to you. So, someone in the chat was asking uh, that if when we say that this is the third and last call, does this mean that the incubator will stop existing? Thank you, Tanya, uh, for raising the question and thank you for the person that uh, wrote it in the chat. Uh, so, as we explained, the impact tech project is funded by the European Commission and the funding ends in 2022. So um, the, the accelerator incubator will stop when the funding ends. So, yeah. OK, well, that's sad, but thank you very much for, for, for your answer. Now we're moving to another question for Maria Mbente. For Maria Mbente, uh, Connor is asking, how did you plan to make a sustainable business if you offer the product for free? We have always <laughs> done it. Like, uh, as I just said, like um, we started providing free paper notebooks to university students. Uh, can you pick one? Yeah, I'll go ahead. I'll, I'll show you. So, uh, as I said as well, like my background is in advertising. I believe advertisers can pay for anything. Then this is how we live on. Like, um, this is a, a notebook from a university here, uh, the Politecnica, the, the Science University in Barcelona, and we basically put advertising inside. So we do the very same thing with the app. So um, we do not uh, restrict any feature or any usage. Everything is for free, but people have to cope with, with ads nowadays. Um, or pay as they, well. Yeah, they, they, they can pay like around three euros uh, one time and they can remove ads forever. And this is how we do it. Like, Okay, I think, Connor, you got your answer there. So, I mean, uh, you can always reach out to Maria and, and Vente and uh, learn from what they did. So that's amazing. Thank you very much. And another question um, is, would be like, what is that you found in the program that you did not expect when you were applying? Uh, maybe Jose, or you can tell us a bit. Uh, what, what what surprised you? 
Um, actually, because we have hardware, uh, we had to ship this. Uh, of course, this is our problem. It's not uh, the, the program's problem because uh, we knew that we would have to do it in, in other countries. And uh, we have to be aware of this. So logistics, it's very complicated. I, I'm sure that Johanna can uh, can help me with that, but it's sometimes unbelievable. You just send something for a pilot uh, to some school or to some place or to someone, and then it gets retained in the customs. Uh, this happened to us in Israel. Only two days ago, we could uh, deliver some uh, of the keyboards to our mentor. So uh, as we thought about everything, we sent more. So we had, you know, we had like this lucky because one of them were uh, delivered to the right address and the other stayed there for more than three months. So uh, that was uh, what happened to us and I was not expecting for this. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Jose. Joanna, do you want to add something? Something that surprised you and that you did not expect about the program? There was not so much surprising things. Uh, I think uh, there was quite much paperwork before starting those school pilots. So th that was one thing, but uh, I think it's because it's a new funded program. So there is, there is uh, paperwork before, because of that. Okay, thank you very much. And now I will move on to a question for, for Roman. So can you tell us more about the testing of the product by the community? How do you find the people to test the product via Impact EdTech? I think that's a really interesting uh, question. Yes, indeed. Uh, thank you for, uh, for raising it. Um, so to about the testing of the of the product by the community so one of the partners of uh, impact tech one of the consortium partners is european schoolnet and european schoolnet is a network of ministries of education and uh, they uh, help to identify uh, teachers uh, that will test the product uh, in real situations so that's uh, how uh, we we do it and uh, we test uh, the product the community Thank you very much, Roman. Yes, indeed, Impact at the program is a consortium of European School Lead Funding Box and Easy, and all of us put our our, our little uh, piece to, to make this happen. So thank you very much. But uh, Roman, uh, another question for you. Someone also in the chat is asking if the product needs to be functional at the moment of the application or it can be under development. Also an interesting uh, question when uh, filling in your application. Um, so here it i cannot provide a yes or no uh, answer i would refer you to the to the guide of uh, to the guide of applicants there is a trl uh, threshold a trl level to reach uh, to be uh, eligible uh, to apply for the program so um, yes depending on your solution and uh, it's a technology technology readiness level uh, then read the, the guide of applicants and you'll find all your answers Okay, thank you very much. We are running uh, till the end. We just have five more minutes. Uh, please, uh, those questions that we could not uh, address, don't hesitate to send them by email and we will gladly reply to them after this session. I'm just going to take a last uh, question that I have from Lucia that says, what were your priorities when you decided to take the first step into building your company? So maybe Bente and Maria, do you want to start? Um, so our first step in building the company, I would say, so in terms of the mobile application, in the beginning, we were very centered on products and our users. So we were actually not even thinking about monetization in the beginning. We were just thinking about creating a good product um, that users would, would like. And that's what we focused on even before promote, starting like to promote the, the app. So our app grew organically. We have we have not been promoting any through paid acquisitions or anything. So I think in the beginning, it's really important to like find your like um, to make a really good product that solves a real problem and that users that users love. Okay, thank you very much. So product user centered. And Johanna, Jose, do you want to to get your input on this? 
Yeah, I think everything starts starts with building a team so that you can find uh, right people around you, and then of course focusing on building a good product. That is that is most important in the beginning. Everything uh, good follows after that. Okay, users, product, and team. And then Jose. I like to tell stories, so <laughs> it'll be a short one. Uh, I, I can say that I have never worked for someone. I was always this entrepreneur and no one could uh, get near me and say, uh, I think I want to buy something. I have, I have, what do you want to buy? So I have things here and I have things there, but it was just selling and buying, buying and selling. And then I came up with this uh, solution to teach kids music. And I saw so many interesting things. And then uh, I, I, I came up with uh, the Glaison that uh, had the concept of the keyboard. And I saw, you, you know, people changing their lives completely in front of me. So uh, the priorities at that moment was, I have to make this work. Uh, it, it, it can cost whatever it, it will cost, but I have to do it. And as Johanna said, Build your team, your fantastic team, and go to the market. That was what I also did. Thank you very much. As always with the stories, but we love them because they are always really, really inspiring. So thank you very much to the four of you for being here today. And thank you to all to your teams, because I guess we also have to thank them for, for the achievement. And congratulations once more on achieving the best in class. We're going to miss you in the Impact the program. And uh, well, to the participants, if anyone is uh, preparing the application, you already uh, heard all of them. You have amazing tips and tricks. Uh, be careful when applying. Just read the FAQ, read the guided for, applica for applicants. And now I'm going to uh, give the floor to Roman that is going to close the session. Thank you very much for attending today's session. Yes, thank you, Tanya, Jose, Joanna, Bente and Maria uh, for today's, so for moderating today's session and uh, for sharing your very uh, inspirational thoughts. Uh, thank you for everyone uh, that attended for the very smart uh, and insightful questions. Uh, I hope that you had uh, the answers that you were looking for. I hope that today's talk and info day uh, was useful for those that uh, that participated. And um, yes, just one last word. Do not hesitate to uh, submit your application. Visit the website, uh, browse, uh, browse the website. Everything is online. You should find uh, most of your uh, answers. Uh, directly on the website, but if not, uh, we do have a help desk, and we'll very will be very happy to um, yes to help you um, through your uh, your application or to answer any of your queries. On behalf of the Impact uh, EdTech Consortium, we look forward to reading uh, your your applications to the ones that will submit them. Thank you so much, and uh, have a lovely rest of the day.